I hate plan B. And I tell you why. Because we have so many doubters, as I've said earlier, the, the no-sayers. We have so many of those people that say no and you can't do it and it's impossible. That is okay because we just turn off, as I said earlier, and we listen and we hear the no being a yes, you can't do it, do it, you can do it, and all of that. So that, that is possible to do that amongst all the negative people around you. But when you start doubting yourself, that's very dangerous. Because now what you're basically saying is, is that if my plan doesn't work, I have a fallback plan, I have a plan B. And that means that you start thinking about plan B and every thought that you put into plan B, you're taking away now that thought and that energy from plan A. And And it's very important to understand that we function better if there is no safety net, because plan B becomes a safety net. It says that if I fail, then I fall and I get picked up and I have something else there that, was, that will protect me. And that's not good, because people perform better when there's no safety net. People perform better in sports and everything else if you don't have a plan B. I'm telling you, I've never ever had a plan B. I say I made a full commitment that I'm going to go and be a bodybuilding champion. I made a full commitment that I'm going to be in America. I made a full commitment that I'm going to get in the show business and I'm going to be a leading man no matter what it takes, I will do the work. I will do the work over and over and over until I get it. And the same was in politics and everything like that. So to me, it is very dangerous to have a plan B because you're cutting yourself off from the chance of really succeeding. And the reason, one of the main reasons why people want to have a plan B is because they are worried about failing. What is if I fail, then I don't have anything else? Well, let me tell you something. Don't be afraid of failing because there's nothing wrong with failing. You have to fail in order to climb that ladder. There's no one that doesn't fail. Michael Jordan said in one of his interviews, when they said, you are unbelievable, you're the greatest basketball player of all times. I mean, tell me about that. And he says, well, you're just mentioning the successes. But he says, for me to become the greatest basketball player, I missed 9,000 shots when I was playing basketball at the NBA games. So during these games that he was so successful, he missed 9,000 shots. Does it make him a failure? No. He's one of the greatest basketball players of all times, but he failed 9,000 times. Do you get it? We all fail. It's okay. What is not okay is that when you fail, you stay down. Whoever stays down is a loser. And winners will fail and get up. Fail and get up. Fail and get up. You always get up. That is a winner. That is a winner. I failed in bodybuilding. I, failed. I lost bodybuilding competitions. I lost powerlifting competitions. I lost weightlifting competitions. I had movies that went in the toilet and that were terrible and got the worst reviews. And in politics, I remember, I had many of the initiatives on the ballot and we lost. My approval rating in California went down to 28%. And then it went back up again and they won again the governorship. Hey, we all lose. 
we all have lost us this is okay and this is why i say don't be worried about losing because when you're afraid of losing then you get frozen you get stiff you're not relaxed you got to be in order to perform well in anything if it's in boxing or if it is on your job or with your thinking is only happening when you relax so relax it's okay to fail let's just go all out and give it everything that you got that's what it is all about so don't be afraid to fail